So more people are joining the protest in New York and other cities. Just how far do you think this can go? Well, I am hopeful. This needs to come. I have written so much about what's going on in the Middle East, the Arab Spring that uh, hasn't bloomed, but it certainly is fervent and sustained and committed. Very impressive. It's going on across Europe. It's going on in Greece, in Spain, in Italy, in the UK, in Portugal, in Ireland, in other countries. It went on in Wisconsin, in America last winter. Went on week after week after week. Heroic people took over the Capitol building in Madison, Wisconsin. They've been, they've been put down, but they're still committed and they haven't given up. And even though they've lost so much, they still plan coming back. Now this. This is the core, core issue. This is the most important issue of all. I wonder if the people in New York, in Chicago where I live, in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in Dallas, in New Orleans, all over the country, dozens of cities across the country, my home city of Boston, over a thousand turned out. I think I heard 1,800. And it's just the beginning. I, they know enough about what's wrong to be out on the streets. All right, what so they... if, if I may just jump in here for a moment, you, you've drawn a very broad picture here. You've mentioned uh, the past several months of the uprising across the Eurozone, uh, the Arab Spring apart, uh, uh, across parts of uh, Northern Africa and the Middle East as well. Now you're, you're, you're drumming up lots of states across America. Uh, some of the activists are, are saying that they have drawn inspiration from, for example, the Tahrir Square Revolution in Cairo. I mean, do you think, as you're suggesting perhaps, that this is the start of an American spring then? Well, we don't know. I certainly hope so. Americans are the last ones to react. It doesn't happen very often. And the last time it happened, it happened in the 1960s, the civil rights. It happened in, in the 60s and the 70s to the mid-70s against the Vietnam War. The anti-war protest in America was very vibrant a few years ago, and then it died off. We, we practically don't see it now. But now this has erupted. The issue is Wall Street. Everybody knows that the bankers are bad guys. The too big to fail banks shouldn't exist. I just wrote a book about this. Well, there, there, there are many people that are saying the governments are already in bed with the major uh, bank players here. But let's, I mean, we, we, as we're talking to you here, so we, we're showing some pretty uh, impressive footage, uh, somewhat, some would call violent footage of the, uh, the way the police have been handling uh, the uh, so-called protesters in, in Wall Street. Uh, certainly some, some bouts of violence there. How would you assess their actions? And would you, would you see any reverberations across, across Washington, D.C.? Uh, Capitol Hill seems to be fairly quiet at the moment over this. Well, this is what cops always do. They come out in the streets. So Gerald Salenti calls the police, enforces for the crime bosses. That's exactly what they are. Doesn't matter whether it's Wall Street protesters, IMF World Bank meetings, G20 meetings, uh, the global justice protesters come out in the streets. The cops bludgeon them. The Democrat and the Republican National Conventions in 2000 and 2004 and 2008 Republicans, the, the cops came out and bludgeoned people. They arrested people before the conventions even began. They, they locked them up so they couldn't get out on the streets. That's what the cops do. They've beaten them, they've kicked them, they've brutalized them, they've maced them. But these people keep coming out and 700 were just arrested. There'll be more on the streets today. I really hope this is sustained. Let me just mention the core issue that these people need to understand. They know a lot of things are wrong, but the core issue is the power of money. Whoever controls the power of money has supreme power. That controls everything, controls war and peace, controls everything going on in the corporate world. The bankers on Wall Street have the power of money. They literally run the government. Goldman Sachs runs the government. J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, they run the government. This has to stop. The people on the streets across America have to understand this and they have to demand that the power of money return to the Congress. As Article 1, Section 8 says, only the Congress has the power to coin money. Doesn't say J.P. Morgan does, doesn't say Bank of America does, only the Congress does. If that power is returned to Congress, they won't have to protest about bankers because these bankers won't be sustained. The two big to fail ones 
will literally be dismantled and dismantled as they should be, and the power of money will go back to the people where it belongs. Well, there are many people uh, who are saying when it comes to, for example, the Eurozone and the ongoing crisis with Greece, that it should just be allowed to default, uh, forcing some sort of a reconstruction of the financial system there. Uh, Stephen Lendman, a radio host and author, I would love to talk to you further, but that's all the time we have for. Many thanks indeed. Thank you, Rory.